Our previous dream trip to the Isles of Scilly was beset by bad weather, forcing a retreat. But, undeterred, we return in this episode and begin to show you how beautiful these islands really are. This is Intrepid Bear, a 40-foot sailboat off to explore the world with her crew, Ian and Kate. Come aboard and let's see what's out there. It was approaching midsummer, so the first rays of dawn arrived at a time that would best be described as the middle of the night rather than the morning. But we had an appointment with the tide. Good morning, 03.45, underway, heading for Scilly. Give it another go. But the light's coming up over the horizon already, ready for sunrise. The sea's absolutely flat, calm, without a breath of wind, uh, which is really nice. It's not so nice for sailing, but it's really nice just being on a flat sea. We're hoping for a beautiful sunny day, and maybe the shorts will be out later. After a couple of hours, we arrived at the point whose tidal flows had caused us to get up at such an ungodly hour. So over there, that's um, the Lizard Point, which is the most southerly point in mainland UK. Often confused with Land's End, the turn around there. Um, and then we'll be heading due west across to St. Mary's in Scilly. Hopefully, the wind is going to be southerly. We might be able to pop our sails up. Um, the wind is picking up a little bit now from the flat calm that we left in which it was forecast to do, so fingers crossed we'll get those sails up and um, have a nice trip across to Scilly. Let's we'll see how we go. The Lizard Point is one of many on the south coast of the UK where the sea floor shelves rapidly and that can cause some confused seas. Fortunately on this day it was only just slightly bumpy. And once around the corner, sure enough, the wind was from the right direction and had picked up, so we hoisted those sails. Hoisting the mainsail requires one of us, or the autopilot, to point the boat straight into the wind, while the other goes to the mast and hoists initially by hand. But once a fair weight of sail is up, then the winch is used for a final hoisting and tension. Yeah, it's all good. Nearly there. A little bit more. Twang it. Yeah, that'd be all right. The headsail, otherwise known as the Genoa, is much easier to deploy as it's simply unrolled from where it is stored on the forestay. Then just point the boat where you want it to go and set the sails to suit. Sailing pretty well, 6.5 knots. There's a lot of traffic around us. Uh, mostly leisure boats as well on the display there. All the little oval shaped boats are um, sailing yachts because that's uh, they show up as little ovals, um, little egg shapes, whatever you want to call them. So there's a lot of them all heading to Scilly at the same time as us. But we've got about 12 to 15 knots of wind at the moment, forward of the beam. Um, and we're doing six and a half knots. Just going along really nicely at the moment. This is what sailing's meant to be like, isn't it? Oh, and no foul weather gear. Summer is almost here. And whilst I had a little snooze in the tranquility of the aft cabin, the situation had developed. It's just a far port side over here. There's a, a small boat, smaller than us. Um, they've been kind of pacing us all the way down and they've somehow managed to overtake while I was having a snooze. Um, and they do say when two sailboats are side by side that um, it's always a race. Well, I'm not going to stoop to that level. We're just sailing parallel to him but faster, obviously. So of course I had to deploy all of my limited sail trimming skills and the extra 10 foot of length of boat which gives us a significant advantage to overhaul the other vessel and put us back where we belonged. 
It was only then that I noticed that things were not quite as fair as they should have been in the first place, and it was no wonder they got ahead of us. I just noticed they've got their engine running, so they're motor sailing. They're a 30 foot boat, so making good speed actually, but they've got their engine running, so it's not a fair competition, is it? We're sailing and uh, without our engine, so game over, we won. Oh, sorry, it's not a race, is it? After a very pleasant sail, which did seem to be a bit short of Kate, but I can assure you she was there, we arrived back to St Mary's Island in the Isles of Scilly. So on our final approach into the northeast side of St Mary's, a place called Watermill Cove. You can just about see it out the window. Drop anchor and have some zeds because I haven't had enough in the last 24 hours. So uh, we'll get the hook down and um, yeah, get out. So here we're back, Watermill Cove, back in the Isles of Scilly. Hopefully this time we'll stay a bit longer. Hopefully the weather will be a bit better. But uh, we arrived after about 12 hours, which was quicker than the passage back. And so that's nice. So just have a quick look around here. So we thought we'd head over to St Helen's Pool because it should be more, even more sheltered over there. But the fog has come down. It looked like it was clearing and literally weighed anchor. Down it came. So we've got the radar going. We've got the chart plotter on. It is quite tight. But we have backup plans if all else fails. I know what the compass course is. Um, we've got our phones and the iPad all with charts on and a paper chart if we need it. But if the uh, electronics suddenly failed, we'd literally just stop and drop anchor, work out where we are and then go from there because we've got a rising tide so even in the fog it should be okay it will be okay Anyway, enough about the fog. It wasn't long before the sun came out and revealed the full beauty of St. Helens Pool and all the surrounding islands. It's been such a long time coming that we will just take a moment to enjoy. With the weather on the up, it was time to enjoy and explore. So I just uh, popped out around the back of the island here towards uh, St. Helens, back of St. Helens Island. And uh, we're just gonna have a little go with the lobster pot. Just looking for the right spot. I've got to find somewhere with a bit of depth, but also hopefully on the edge of the rocks or something like that. And, uh, you never know, we might get a crab or a lobster, but maybe nothing. Who knows, we'll see tomorrow. Some evenings and some anchorages just move you to play a tune. And of course all the other boats in the anchorage need to know when to lower their colours as well. An evening tune, sleep dearly sleep.
So let's get out there and check out the lobster pot. So no luck that day, but we moved the pot and came back the next day. It was an actual lobster and of legal landing size as well. Surf and turf with the lobster we caught ourselves. Doesn't get much better than that, does it? You never know what you're going to get when you put the pot out and sometimes you're lucky to get the pot back. So good morning. Um, because the dinghy's out of action, the uh, lobster pot's been out for a couple of days now. Um, so I'm going to go out and get it in the kayak. <clears throat> It'd be a bit of an interesting mission to try and balance the pot on the, on the back of the kayak, particularly if it's thronging with lobsters. I can dream. Um, so yeah, we're going to have a paddle out and uh, pick it up. So even in a kayak on a nice day like today, Scilly Islands are pretty unforgiving. So you do have to be a little bit careful of what you're doing. See, not a huge smell, but you, smell, <laughs> not a huge swell, but you don't want to get caught up in that in a small boat like a kayak or the dinghy come to that. So uh, there's a bit of a situation. The uh, pot is well under the water. Obviously it's pinned down and uh, I can see the float under the water, but from the kayak I can't get to it. So the dinghy glue will be dry at lunchtime, so we'll have to pop back. But let's go see if you can see the pot from the surface. Just down there. Well that's too deep for me to reach, so uh, we'll have to come back later. So we waited until low tide and then returned in the dinghy, which was now fully fixed. You might be wondering what happened to it. Well, you'll find out about that a little bit later on. Because you got it up last time and I thought I couldn't. Yeah, that's not good. They have a problem. under a rock. Um, it was indeed stuck fast and we very nearly couldn't get it back at all. Okay so it got a little bit hectic there with the um, pot being stuck on the bottom. We managed to recover it similar to you do with a um, stuck anchor. Just try pulling it from lots of different directions. I guess it had gone under a rock or some seaweed um, but after all that nada. nada. It's empty the bait is untouched. Uh, the bait... And before we leave the lobster pot, we did catch one more lobster during our stay and Kate made a lovely lobster spaghetti with it. So there we go, lobster spaghetti. Mmm. You wouldn't get better than that in a restaurant. That's all going on. So to the question of what happened to the dinghy, well, we'll start at the start. And we're planning a beach barbecue, no, beach beers with a fire later. So there's not a lot of wood on the foreshore. There's two pallets over there where we're going to have the beach on St. Helens. And I found one over on whatever this island is, Teen, I think, or one of the little ones. Anyway, we're trying to tow this pallet because I didn't want to put it in the dinghy with all the rusty nails and everything. It's fine if we go slow, but if we speed up, It acts like a submarine, so we'll go slow. Okay, cool. So no, we didn't puncture the dinghy with an old pallet. That's just where the story starts. There were several boats in the anchorage, some social media friends already. 
and we invited everybody to beers on the beach with a bonfire. One of the great things about the cruising life are all the different people from all the different walks of life that you get to meet. It was a fantastic evening. This segment is courtesy of our good friend Jack at Born Free Adventure and it really sums up the evening and the lifestyle. So it's like technical issue this morning. We've um, woken up after last night's amazing party on the beach. Um, unfortunately, the tide was really low and we had to bump the dinghy across some rocks because just can't lift the thing. And um, this morning we woken up and it's full of water. It hasn't rained particularly, um, so that can only mean there's a hole in the fabric bottom somewhere, uh, which is annoying to say the least. Um, so we'll lift the dinghy out of the water, already taken the outboard off and the fuel out. We'll lift the dinghy out of the water, try and find the hole and see if we can patch it. Okay, so I hope you can hear me over the wind, but um, yeah, here's the problem. So here, hole, and another one here. The transom's a bit messed up, but I don't think that's leaking. Yeah, a little bit too much, well, I'd say a little bit too much alcohol. At the end of the day, we kept tried to keep the dinghy afloat, kept throwing the anchor further and further out, then it got dark. Then when we came to go after a few beers, it was on the rock, so we thought we could slide it on the seaweed because um, we couldn't lift it, it's too heavy really, especially on slippery, horrid, jaggedy rocks. And uh, there's your result. So I failed in my duties as a YouTuber, didn't I? I never... Uh, I meant to film a little bit of the dinghy repair and I forgot. But anyway, these are the patches. So there's a patch there. Had to put three layers of glue on both and then stick the patch down, a contact adhesive and a patch there. Still a bit of a scuff over that side, which I haven't patched. I'm hoping that one is not actually gone through. Suffice it to say, we will not be dragging the dinghy in that manner again. So the dinghy was just a minor setback, but our spirits were not dampened. We were in a beautiful spot and the sun was shining, and best of all, St. Helens Pool is central to all of the major islands, so it was a perfect base to explore from. And just look at the colour of that water. One episode simply can't do justice to the beauty of these islands. So be sure to join us next time as we go ashore and explore.